Howdy, today we're on the Brisbane River at a place called Colleges Crossing, which is just north of Ipswich. Colleges Crossing is a particularly unique part of the river because it's where the salt water and the fresh water meet. So we're gonna get species from the ocean coming up here and having their babies. And when their babies get big enough, they'll swim back down the creek out into the sea. But we're also gonna get the freshwater species that live further up in the creek in this section of the river. So let's have a look at what could be living in this particular part of the creek. Let's get murky. And right away when we got to this creek and had a look in the water, we saw lots of fish. We saw these estuary glassfish, blue eyes, but we also saw these amazing creatures living on the rocks and they're called speckled gobies. The speckled gobies are perfectly camouflaged for this environment. And unless they move, you will hardly notice them, which makes them excellent ambush predators, feeding on aquatic insects and tiny crustaceans. They don't get very big, only about five centimeters, and they're found in brackish and freshwater streams from Western Australia to Brisbane. These fish are very exciting to watch in an aquarium as they dance around, showing off their fins when they feel comfortable with their surroundings, and they don't tend to bother other fish. I love their face. They have a permanent frown, but it's a very endearing permanent frown. And look how still they keep, just waiting for something to come by and then they'll strike at it. This particular part of the Brisbane River has a lot of freshwater plants growing in it. It overwhelmed this section of the river and there were only a few points that we could actually see what was going on. The reason for this is there's a lot of farms nearby and the runoff from the farms gets into the river and makes the plants grow like crazy. Here we can see some blue eyes and the estuary glassfish. And these estuary glassfish are found in Queensland and New South Wales. They can survive in both brackish and fresh water. They've got very big eyes for fish of their size, which helps them to find their prey and keep away from larger fish. They school together in very large numbers and come to this section of the Brisbane River to breed. We continued further up the river to have a look what we could find in the deeper sections of the creek. From above, the water looked very clear. However, from below, it was nowhere near as clear as it appeared. And we didn't realise while we were walking around there until later on that we saw this sign pointing out that there's sharks and other dangerous creatures living in this section of the creek. So it's lucky we didn't get too deep because we didn't want to run into any sharks. These fish weren't very far away and the ones that just zoomed by the camera are mullet. And mullet, just like brim, also come up into the fresh water to breed and to search for prey. And as you can see in this creek, there was a lot of food for them. Now unfortunately, there were also some non-native species like tilapia. And tilapia are a cichlid that's from Africa and the only way that they got into the creeks around Australia is from people introducing them. Typically someone would have a fish tank, they wouldn't want the fish anymore or maybe they would even deliberately put it in the creek near them and they wreak havoc on the native species. They're a very efficient predator and they will take over sections of the creek. They outcompete the natives and they'll eat the babies of them. However, there were so many natives in this section of the creek that they hadn't managed to outcompete them just yet. There were so many species we were overwhelmed by the amount that we could see. And there was a great mix of fish from the ocean and fish from up in the freshwater reaches of the stream, like the blue eyes. Blue eyes can also tolerate fresh and salt water. However, they can't get very salty, but they can tolerate a degree of salt. So they're typically found in brackish streams like this section of the Brisbane River but you can also find them in totally fresh water, like our video from Balloomba Falls, where we found a lot of blue eyes living in totally fresh water. 
This was a very large body of water. And there were so many plants and so many big fish. And clearly, very big fish can get in here like sharks. And sharks can tolerate fresh water just like the fish that we've seen can. And they'll also come up for similar reasons. Bull sharks will come up into the fresh water to have their babies and you typically get very big bull sharks coming up into the fresh water to have their babies. When they have their babies, the babies will eat all of these species that you can see here until they're big enough and they feel confident enough to go back into the sea. Thankfully, we didn't see any, but we did see a lot of really big fish jumping in the deeper parts of the water, which means something was spooking them. We can see the shadows of a very sweet and curious fish swimming by. These amazing creatures are a type of brim, and brim live in coastal salty water, but they can tolerate fresh water as well. They take well over five years to be able to reach sexual maturity and lay the eggs that will become the babies of the next generation. But amazingly, a certain percentage of the population of brim can change from males to females when they reach four years old. They are a very friendly and curious fish. They had no problem swimming around my legs. Unfortunately, due to their slow growth rate, they are a highly threatened species by commercial fishing. However, their greatest threat is actually recreational non-catch and release fishing. If you do happen to catch a brim, make sure to release them back into the water. You can see some more of those glass fish swimming alongside the brim. The glass fish tend to school in pretty large numbers. And lots of these glass fish we saw were very small babies. These ones we're looking at the moment are sort of a mid-range glass fish. They do get a little bit bigger than this, but they're not fully grown at the moment. And here we can see thousands of these baby glass fish. I've never seen so many glass fish in one spot. This is the perfect environment for them. Lots of food and lots of places for them to hide beneath those plants. We decided to have a look on the other side of the river now. There was a lot of plants nearby and we came across this interesting looking path. Not knowing what it could lead to, we decided to follow it and see what we could find. And it led us to a forest full of lots of native trees, plants and animals. We saw lots of birds and they would stand very, very still on submerged trees and logs waiting for fish to swim by and then they'd strike very quickly and catch the fish. And we had a look over the other side of the river However, there weren't as many fish on this side, but we did see a school of these glass fish moving very, very slowly. Which was strange compared to the other side of the river because they moved very quickly. They were almost perfectly still over this side. There were also lots of these water dragons nearby. Here's a good view of the full body of water and people will go fishing here and they'll also take their boats out. This was a freshwater plant that was growing in the Brisbane River that I thought was interesting because I have never seen it before. Perhaps you know what species it is and you can leave a comment. Same with this floating plant that we're looking at at the moment. My guide decided to have a look in this particular part of the river because we heard that there could be lungfish living in here, but we didn't manage to see any due to how murky this water was. I wasn't keen on getting in because obviously bull sharks can get in here and although they aren't interested in people, they're very curious and the way they investigate things is with their mouths. They don't intend to harm people, but they often do end up leaving quite a nasty bite. What an incredible journey it's been. We saw species from both salt and fresh water living in the same environment together. I will never not be amazed by how Australia's underwater creatures can adapt to their environments. I hope you enjoyed coming along for this adventure and until next time, keep it murky.